Hey guys, it's Howard here and I have a video for you which is the first video in Mastering Motion which is my new advanced course in 2D animation. When students come into the course they typically get quite overwhelmed with the amount of information they have access to now within Mastering Motion. So this video is a rundown of the curriculum, chapter by chapter, step by step, so that you can see what you're learning and in what order. This is for you to see on YouTube as well, so that you have a detailed view of what you would be getting if you decide to join the course Mastering Motion. So that's the video. I hope it gets you excited for learning more about 2D animation, and I'm going to roll the video now. All right, guys, I am going to give you today a breakdown of the course curriculum for Mastering Motion. Part of why I've added this in is because I understand that when you first enter the course and there's 160 videos laid out in front of you, it can be very overwhelming to just know what exactly you're looking at at this big list of videos. So let's start with the introduction. So first of all, I've laid it out in a chronology that I think is appropriate, that I think is an effective way to learn these subjects. So by all means, you can skip ahead to the later chapters if you want, but I've laid this out in an order that I think is suitable. By clicking to the next video, that will uh, take you through and it will introduce you to all the concepts in an order that makes sense. But anyway, starting off, we've got mastering drawing. And as you probably know with my philosophy, I find that drawing is a central uh, component to frame by frame animation. And so I want to elevate your drawing skills uh, even before we get into the animation stuff. So to start off, I know that for some of you who have been taking getting started in 2D animation, you might have taken the drawing part of getting started in 2D animation a while ago. And so the fundamentals of drawing is a 10 part series that I just did to revisit the fundamentals of drawing. For those of you who might be a little bit rusty at drawing, maybe haven't drawn in a while, or uh, just want reminding on those kind of things. And then I also had a few test quizzes. I just thought it would be a fun little thing to do to kind of quiz you so that you can test what you know in the fundamentals of drawing. There's no consequence to uh, getting a question wrong or anything like that, but it's something that I'm experimenting with and I would be interested in your opinions on that if you find them fun or if you think they're lame and I should take them out. I mean, if everyone thinks they're lame, then I'll just take them out and we can forget about it, but I thought it could be fun. Then we've got design fundamentals. What kind of animation course goes into design fundamentals? Well, I find that design is a really important part of the animation production process, how you design your characters, including animation friendly design. And this is going to help you to be very much more efficient in your animation process by making your designs animation friendly. And I'll get into what that is in the video. Your natural hand motion, I would say that this is probably, from, from the feedback that I've got from the pre-order students, this is the standout lesson in this chapter. People just love this video because it's, it's about the root of drawing and your confidence with your lines. If you align your hand with, if you align your drawings and your lines with your natural hand motion, it's going to make it feel easier for you and you're going to feel more confident with your pen. And this is really is a, such a foundational thing. The simplification and caricature. I've got a good demo there for how to do that. And there's, it comes with an assignment as well. So you can try that out for yourself. These three elements, accuracy, aesthetics, and caricature. You'll get to hear my philosophy, my theory on that with, when it comes to drawing. We've got some illustration master studies here. I pick some of the best illustrators in the world right now. And I break down what I like about their style. And, and really it's just one of those lessons to, to show you what's possible with just still images. Like before we even get into animation, very powerful stuff. With the members of the Discord group, we have been collecting together at the end of the month and uh, going through one of the chapters. And we talked about it and I was able to give feedback on students' work, check up with them and see how they, um, how they were doing with the chapter. And so you have the opportunity, you don't have the opportunity to go back in time and be there, but if you're visiting this course now, you can watch through that 
feedback recording for yourself and you might learn some things there. So that's Mastering Drawing. So once we've done that, we're moving into animation really and we go into Mastering Animation. So I was really excited to bring this chapter to you guys because this is me sort of adding my own little uh, paragraph into the history book of animation. Oh, that Maybe I'm overthinking it a little bit and it's actually not a big deal at all. But you're going to see my five new principles of animation. These are things that you don't find in the animator survival kit or the illusion of life, not in the same way. You will learn them in, in my own way, in a different way, in the way I understand them. But before we do that, I'm getting ahead of myself here. We've got, just like in the principles of drawing, we've got the 12 principles of animation revisited. Now, that means that in a one hour seminar, I go back over the 12 principles of animation. This means that if you're from the Getting Started course and you're a little bit rusty on the 12 principles, you can catch up here. But I will say it is a refresher course. It is not a rigorous uh, exploration of the 12 principles like I do in my Getting Started course. But I thought I'd make your transition to mastering motion more comfortable by providing that for you. Expressing emotion with motion. This is one that I'm really happy with. It came to me all of a sudden one day, I was like, I've got it. I've got the perfect way to help people understand how I see animation. It's about isolating movement without the drawing. We actually strip out any semblance of drawing at all and we express how characters can convey how they feel purely with movement. It's a really fascinating topic and one that I'm really excited to show you guys. So let's talk more about the five principles of animation. I think effects animators in particular are gonna be really, really interested in this. So anyone who's animating uh, things like explosions, fire, water, these have their applications especially in those, but they're also things that find their way into any animation that you make. And you can, you can find ways to apply these. So we've got air currents, curling lines, shock waves, strobing and wave motion. That's something for you to look forward to in that chapter. Now in later exercises, you're gonna see those things applied and I will actually point out at times, I will say, hey, look at what I'm doing here. This is strobing. Do you remember strobing? So you, you'll see these things come up in later demonstrations. And I do a lot of demonstrations in this course where you will be able to see my screen recording as if you're looking over my shoulder while I am animating. And I think that's one of the best ways to learn. Reference process now. We are evangelical about our reference process. And we can split this chapter into three for this. We've got, first of all, the reference process itself. This is how I start the chapter. And I take you through step by step. That is a step by step breakdown of what the reference process is. It's important that you follow those uh, processes if you're going to extract the maximum value out of your reference sources. That's the reference process. Now, we add another dimension onto this when we cross over here into the levels of referencing. Level one is the easiest and the most straightforward and it requires the lowest level of sort of uh, independent drawing and animation skills. It's more tethered to the reference and then it gradually goes more advanced and as we do, we get further away from the original reference material. And I actually have a special demonstration for you when I take the same reference and show you, I demonstrate for you level one, level two and level three reference process. Uh, so you can see it, You don't. it's not just theory, you can actually see it applied here. Now with each of these levels that we go through, we have an explanation, we have a demo, and we have an assignment. So I start with a with a seminar, a lecture seminar, explaining it, ex explaining the concept step by step. Then I show you it. I show you it applied in a practical example. And then we have an assignment where you get the opportunity to try it for yourself. And we have that times three for each level of referencing. So I'm taking you up progressively into more and more advanced ways of animating. After that, we have a bonus because I thought it was quite relevant to this while we're looking at the topic of, of reference. 
A lot of people have asked me, actually, this was a response to a, a popular question that I get asked. How do you adapt your drawing style to a different style? How would you go about doing that? Now, luckily, I usually get uh, paid in my job to use my own style. Like, that's what clients are most interested in. They want me to use my own style. But I know that if I need to, for whatever reason, if I do join a studio or something, I know that, that it's something that I can do. It's something within my repertoire. And so this is a three-part lecture that where I show you how I adapt to any drawing style. Now, I don't want to give you guys the impression that adapting to someone else's drawing style is easy. It's not easy. That's why I've got three parts to this lecture and demonstrations. And you're gonna kind of get a feel for in those demonstrations it is difficult, but I want you to know that it's possible and that you can do it if you want to. Deciding for yourself what your drawing style is. I think some of you feel like you're not in control of your style and this, this is going to put you back in the driver's seat when it comes to deciding what style you want. You see a, a cool image on Pinterest and and you, you really like it, you wish you had that style or something, but you have no way of getting there. Well, this is your way of getting there. So that's a big chapter, important chapter. I've summarized it here, but this is a, a lot of videos in this reference process chapter. And it's this is kind of a top down view of what you're looking at. But there are for some of these, there are multiple videos to explain it. Hand-drawn camera movements, now moving on. And this is a part that a lot of you have been really excited about, I know that much, and for good reason. I think hand-drawn camera movement is something that, for one thing, elevates your, your animation abilities to a whole different level, but it also gives you the freedom to really act on your imagination. I mean, you're gonna be able to animate exactly the images you see in your head, which is super exciting in my opinion. And I've experienced it firsthand and I can tell you guys it is so, so fun. But we start small, okay? Because I can't expect you to just come in here and, and start pulling these crazy camera moves. So we start with a 3D swarm. This is more about small things behaving in a 3D way where they can move away from the camera, they can move towards the camera. I talk about real camera movement techniques. We learn these techniques from live action film where there is a real camera in a real space and we deconstruct that, we, we reverse engineer that. Principles of parallax, these are eight principles that are gonna help you to understand parallax, essentially. Parallax is a really important definition when we're looking at hand-drawn camera movement. By the way, we are not using 3D software for this. This is hand-drawn. We've got example files. These are actually files that are from real commissions that I've created for clients. And you're gonna be able to open them up and take a look for yourself, look through the layer structure and just see how, how they operate. That's gonna give you a new in-depth insight into how these files work you're gonna see spatial versus screen movement. That's a super important concept. This is one of the underpinning concepts that changes the way they see animation, 2D animation. Also building off of the 3D swarm, we have a cube rotation exercise. So when you're doing building interiors and things like that and moving a camera through them, it can help first of all to understand how a cube behaves in 3D space. So I take you through that, I take you through that step by step where you can see a demonstration and then try it for yourself. We have multiplane versus frame by frame. This is just getting a few more definitions out of the way so you understand the difference and that there are two different ways to portray depth in 2D animation. We have a more of a focus on the FBF, frame by frame, but I just want to show you that multiplane is also an option in certain situations. Vanishing points and focal lengths as well. So that's the part one of hand-drawn camera movement. We're not even finished yet. So we've got so much information on just that part one, but I had to split it into two parts because I take you through a demo of me creating a pretty crazy action scene, which is a window jump. So, well, I call it the window jump, but basically this guy runs and jumps out the window of a high rise building and then lands in another building. You get to see the whole process, everything. 
in a 13 part walkthrough. I've edited this walkthrough. So in the low moments, there's time lapses so that it doesn't get as tedious to watch. And I also provide a voiceover so that you can kind of hear my thoughts as I'm animating, which I think for some of you is going to be very valuable. And also, I'm not going to give a lot away here because I want you to, to watch the video. It's my secret weapon for natural camera movement. I think I've cracked it, guys. I found a way to very quickly create this natural camera movement that feels like a handheld camera. Now, I showed this technique to my friend who is an industry animator working in commercial studios. And my friend said they had never thought of approaching it in that way before. And they're experienced about this. So uh, that gave me a lot of confidence that I was onto something there. We've got three parts here for the hand-drawn camera movement. Part three is all about studies. So we are students here. We are looking at some really high quality material. We've got drawing the body in 3D, another reference study, but we're looking at the body from, from a lot of obscure angles and how to approach those angles with foreshortening. Camera movement assignment, you'll get a chance to do it yourself and five camera movement scene studies from live action films. Some of the best films ever made, I break down how they've used the camera and the focus of this one is how they use the camera movement creatively to tell the story. That's a really important thing. We're not just moving the camera for the sake of it just because it's something flashy to do. We're doing it because it makes sense in the story and that's a really important thing. So that puts it all in perspective for you. Combat choreography now, we're moving on to the next part. And when I told you guys that this is like having six courses in one course, I wasn't kidding. Um, each one of these chapters is a course in itself, really. Combat choreography, this is a little bit more concise at this point. We've got combat narratives, that's how we start. So looking at the actual storylines behind combat, and I break it down into several combat narratives. Elements of combat, observing real combat, so we're looking at reference studies. The difference between real combat versus entertainment, and how you change your approach based on the entertainment factors. And animating from reference. So I show you with a piece of reference, we bring it in, I diagram over the top of the piece of reference, and I show you where I creatively change what I see in the reference and change it in my keyframe animation. You have three different combat assignments here. You can follow the first step just fine, and then it gently takes you on to the second step and the third step. And before you know it, you've got a fight scene of your own. So um, it lays it out in a way which uh, breaks it down in a much easier way for you. I show you a demo for how I draw combat poses from imagination. And I've got a six part combat sword fight demo. And lastly, I show you my reference sources. So places that I go to to find really good sources for the poses that you can show for combat animation. So a lot of resources there for anyone who's uh, got goals to make combat choreography of their own. And then changing completely into a different area of 2D animation is character animation. It's split into three. The reason it's so big is because I don't just show you how I do the animation process. I also show you pre-production, production and post-production. So I show you how I plan it all the way through to how I render it with color, shading, lighting, the whole works. Because I get a lot of questions of like, uh, I, I really wanna know how to add my backgrounds in. I wanna know how to paint the backgrounds and add them into the animation. You're right, that's an important part of the animation process. It's not just about making things move in a nice way, it's about creating the entire experience. And so I make sure to show you the whole process here. Part one, which is pre-production. We start with designing the character. We've got two characters in this example scene. I show you how I designed them, but also I go into what people in the animation industry do in their designs. These are things you're gonna to want to know. How do you communicate your design to an animation team? We have basic character animation assignments as well. 
And these are to prepare you for what's to come. These are simpler assignments for you to try for yourself for animating characters. We've got preparing the reference footage. So we're getting ready to shoot the reference footage here. And then I show you my entire process of shooting reference footage for a short film idea that I had. Bringing that footage back into the edit, choosing the best references from that, choosing the keyframes, synchronizing it with the audio because we're doing this to audio, it's character animation where they are talking. Part two, this is where we're in the really nitty gritty of character animation, the intricacies of character animation. So I'm talking about uh, mouth movements, eye movements, the keyframe process, interpreting the audio. That's before we actually get into the drawing. We interpret the audio first as an important step. Character animation assignment as well. So this is the, the big assignment where you, you're actually tasked with uh, creating character dialogue. And then these are going to be the lessons that you learn and apply in that assignment. I didn't stop there. I got pretty carried away with this. And I even got into collaborating with an in-betweener. So you're actually going to be given an assignment, a buddy assignment here. I don't want to spoil too much for you because I'm leaving it as a, a bit of a surprise. But you're going to be taught how to collaborate with other animators on your character animation scenes. Also, I show you methods for keeping your drawings consistent. One of the things I heard from a lot of students is that they have trouble making consistent drawings. And I was there, I remember uh, struggling with consistent drawings and then finding some methods that really worked for me to keep my drawings consistent. So I show you all of those secrets that I have and other character animation techniques, which I won't go into here because they're pretty technical, but you'll find out all about them. In part three, we have the post-production. So I don't think anyone expects in an animation course to learn about color grading, literally color grading and optimizing the colors in your animation scene. We've got coloring process. So how to efficiently fill the colors of your animation in a way that is fast and efficient, but that also looks good. Shading process, same thing, efficient, but also looks good designing and painting the backgrounds, animating background elements. So it's not just a still background we've got here, it's, it's got movement in it, in that background. And I show you that. I show you my compositing process in After Effects. And I show you the sound design process. That's a three part video. I'm serious about sound. I think sound is a really important part of animation. And we finish it off with some inspiration, acting master studies, again, looking at live action film where I feel like there are some of the best performers in the world, breaking that down and seeing what makes those performances great and how can we incorporate that into our own animation work. And as a little bonus as well, I have a process of auto in-betweening. So I just want you to think about how much time and effort that could save you in the future, just understanding that there is an auto in betweening process that you can take. And I show you how to do that in this part. And I use a little example from the animation and I show you how I didn't draw the in-betweens for it. I let the computer generate those in-betweens for me and save me a bunch of time. So just that lesson alone is a huge investment for a lot of people who aren't, haven't been doing that before. And so that makes up the six major parts of this course. Like I said, it's like six courses in one. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you some unimportant information. We've got 160, over 160 lessons in this. I actually just recounted it and it's like 168 lessons. We've got, and that translates to over 32 hours of edited video runtime. It's six months of concentrated education. When you actually spread this out, you do the assignments, you, you follow it properly, half a year of education at least. I've won film festival awards with my animations and it's six advanced courses in one. But this stuff, I don't think this is relevant to you. What does it matter? What does it even mean that it's 160 plus lessons? Well, let me put it in a different way, which I think which will maybe speak to you. How I think you should see it is it's a permanent transition. This is why I think education is the best investment you can make because once you cross this gap, I call it crossing the river and you might need a river guide to take you across. But once you get on the other side, 
it's permanent. You don't unlearn knowledge. You carry it with you for the rest of your life. This can mean the difference between being poor and being wealthy. I've spoken to a lot of you and a lot of you have ambitions to become professional animators and to, to make a decent living off of your animation. It's about having a valuable skill. We're not tricking anyone into paying us for, for animation that's not good. We have the skills to back it. That's what you need. You go from no valuable skill to having a valuable skill. This is the permanent transition I'm talking about. You go from having no recognition in what you do and your efforts to having people understand what you do and really relate to it and connect to it. You go from having limited creative freedom, from having ideas that remain ideas in your head and it's frustrating because you can't get them onto the screen in the same way that you imagine, to having unlimited creative freedom. I truly believe that. I think that when you understand something like the mechanics of 3D camera movement, where you can move the camera in your scene anywhere you want, that's unlimited creative freedom. You can do anything you imagine when you have those kind of things. And you can go from being unsatisfied with your job in a job that's not creative to just enjoying your work every day, skipping your way to work because you know that what you're doing in your work is creating beautiful dreams and fantasies and making them real. I can testify to that firsthand. I love working. I really just enjoy working for my clients and making these creative animations for my clients where I'm exercising my creativity every day. You go from having just having dreams of being a professional animator to living it in real life, have the reality of being a professional animator. And I just think if you really have these dreams all the time, if you find yourself daydreaming and saying, wouldn't it be great to be a professional animator and to do this thing that I love doing every day, to not have to, to work in this job that I don't care about. If you really dream that all the time, don't you think it, you should use everything at your disposal and do everything you can to try it for yourself and to actually try to make it a reality for yourself. It's, it's about having the education, having the knowledge and the know-how and this course will help you get there faster and it will help you be more effective and it will show you things that you might never find out about if you aren't in the course. A permanent transition from being unsatisfied with where you are and change that with animation by elevating your skills to be at a level where people value your skill and that changes everything. People treat you differently. They are now willing to, to listen to your negotiation and to pay you what you're worth. You are worth a lot to a lot of people when you have animation skills. They're now bidding with each other to try and book you for creative work. This is what I want for you guys. This is the vision that I see for you. In that way, this could be the key to a happy life, you know? Um, but it's not exactly for me to say. It's for you to decide for yourself. I don't know how much you fit this. Maybe you feel like you don't want that, and, and in which case, that maybe this course isn't for you. But if you if you resonate with any of these things, then maybe I can help you cross that, that divide there. Um, all right, so that's an introduction to the course curriculum. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.